Our second lesson today comes from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Micah is speaking at the beginning and says, Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. Now God is speaking. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. Then it's the people's turn to speak. They say, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And then Micah speaks again. And the prophet says, He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Friends, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. All right, as far as I can tell, there have been two big things in the news this week. First off, did you know there's a football game today? How about, did you know that the Chiefs are in it? The second thing in the news, if you can get past the commentaries on Andy Reid's shirts and the player interviews and the injury reports and the expert analysis and which states are going to root for whom, you might know that there is a trial happening in the Senate. The impeachment trial has Chief Justice Roberts presiding and lots of people speaking out for what they want to see happen, or as it may be, asking loaded questions about what they want to see happen. It's the setting of a trial that we focus on this morning because when we read Micah's scripture lesson, we're reading about a trial. Micah is the prophet who is speaking for God and for himself and for the people and recording it all. And this case has been brought by God against Israel. And all of creation is acting as the jury. The hills and the mountains and the trees and the rivers and the, the very foundation of the earth are called on to hear God's complaints and Israel's defense. God speaks first and reminds the jury, or maybe more to the point, reminds the, the defendant, the Israelites, of the acts of mercy and grace and faithfulness that God has shown them. God reminds the people of the time when they were slaves in the land of Egypt and how they cried out for freedom and God sent them, Moses and Aaron and Miriam, to bring them out of slavery. And then God presents the case of the prophet Balaam, who was sent by Balak, the king of Moab. His job was to curse the Israelites. And this king, Balak, he tried over and over to get Balaam to curse them, but every time Balaam opened his mouth to speak, he blessed Israel and cursed Moab. 
God reminds the court that it was God who called the Israelites and then blessed them and then continued to bless them. And then God reminds Israel of the help that they received from Rahab when they were entering the land inhabited by other people, how she protected them. God speaks to the jury, composed of rocks and rivers, about the safe passage of the Israelites when crossing the Jordan River, following behind the Ark of the Covenant. And in that very place, the Israelites set up 12 stones to help them always remember of God's faithfulness. God wonders, have you now forgotten the saving acts and my faithfulness? But then God's people get a chance to defend themselves. And when they speak, it's really hard to know whether their words are sincere or if they're whiny or if they're sarcastic. They begin with the question, with what shall we come before the Lord? Do we need to offer burnt offerings and sacrifices to our God? That question seems pretty sincere. They've been offering sacrifices for their sins for as long as they can remember. Maybe it's time to do that again. The part that seems to be missing, though, is the understanding that it might be better not to sin in the first place. And then their sincerity just flies right out the window with the next question. They ask, will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? I know, maybe we need to sacrifice our firstborn children to cover our sins. Their overreaction is kind of like a child who is asked, please pick up your toys from the living room floor. When that child then bursts into tears and says, fine, just take away all my toys and throw them away. Just like the child misunderstands the parent, uh, the Israelites have completely missed the point of what God desires. God doesn't desire rivers of oil or rivers of blood. The prophet Micah interjects into this courtroom scene and reminds them what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. It's important for us to remember that God isn't talking to an individual person, but to all of Israel. There's not just a single person being called out. All of Israel is being personified here in this, this trial. So that means that this hesed, it, loving kindness and justice and walking humbly with God, that's about the whole community and how they interact, not simply about individual lives. A commentator writes, justice, kindness, and the humble walk carry the reader beyond the confines of personal piety into a life-giving reciprocal relationship with God and with God's other beloved children. This is about community. And it's a timeless message. Delivered in the 8th century BCE, but just as relevant today. Each of us individually strives to be an upstanding person, to live our faith, to work in community for justice and kindness and humility. God doesn't require false piety. God desires humility and kindness and love and justice in community. Now, in our other lesson that John read today, the Beatitudes from chapter 5 of Matthew, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
Blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted and reviled. As a community, our denomination, the PCUSA, has made a commitment to build congregational vitality, to dismantle structural racism, to eradicate systemic poverty. Those are lofty goals. They require all of us working in community. And those goals aren't so different from what Matthew and Micah remind us. That what God requires is for us to do justice for the poor in spirit, the reviled and the downtrodden. That we should show love and kindness as we walk humbly with the persecuted and the meek. It's wonderful to work individually, but we also must work collectively to be a blessing to others, to stand together for justice, and to walk where God leads. Now this week, our country has been united in following, anticipating a football game, and in following an impeachment trial. Many eyes are turned to see what will happen and how those sagas will play out. I wonder, what would it be like if we were united around seeking justice? If we were all as excited about sharing love for the poor in spirit as we are for a football game or Senate trials? The good news is that every movement starts small and grows. We can't do everything, but we can do something. We can go out and share God's hesed, that loving kindness. We can go out and offer mercy. We can go out and fight for justice. So wherever you go, as you read the news, as you watch a game, as you go about your daily routine, Go in the knowledge that you don't go anywhere by accident. Everywhere you go, God is sending you. God has a purpose in your being where you are. And Christ who dwells within you has something to do through you, where you are. So go and do justly. Share loving kindness. And walk with God. Because that is how a movement begins. Amen.